Well, good morning. Welcome back to the vlog. And you, uh, you draw me on my new water this time. Uh, I got here late last night, so I didn't bother doing any filming last night because it was raining and uh, it was dark and I wanted to get set up and get the rods out. But yeah, had this this morning. It's been in the sling for about five or 10 minutes, so it's a bit lively. Yeah, first fish from a new water. Haven't weighed it yet, it's probably about 18, 19. Um, taken on the multi rig with a pink scent from hell pop up, or pink scent from heaven pop up, sorry. And uh, just a scattering of the Atlantic heat over the top. Uh, the ones I showed you on my last vlog, the cured ones, uh, cured in the Korea Amino liquid. But yeah, screaming run this morning. First fish from New Water. Let's have a look at the other side. Mm. All right, chill out. Oh, lovely common. Put up a nice scrap as well. Sorry if you can hear the road noise, but I'm right next to a road, so. But yeah, first fish from a new syndicate, or a new, new club water, I should say. Uh, so in this vlog, I'm gonna tell you um, basically how I approach a new water. This is my first time on here. Uh, so I'm just gonna go through the way I'm gonna approach it. And obviously what I've done so far is paying off, so uh, lovely. Let's get it wide. <sighs> oh, bit bigger than I thought. Twenty-two and a half. Oh, lovely old job. Right, let's get it back. I'm afraid I let you get away. result that was uh, nice fish to have on my uh, first session on the new water nice 22 pound 8 common I uh, really didn't expect that to be honest um, conditions are still quite bad it has been raining quite a lot and that was quite cold this morning uh, and the lake's still quite badly flooded uh, I'll just turn the uh, just turn the camera around as you can see here the swim swims really badly flooded basically really muddy all the way up to the bivy or my brawly, I should say. But yeah, well chuffed for that. Um, so yeah, I'll just tell you a little bit about this place. Uh, this is a place called uh, JB Pool. Um, that's on the Mercier Angling Club uh, ticket. Uh, and that's in a place called Polesworth. Um, 
that's only 140 pound a year as well so uh, yeah that's, that's uh, gonna be a nice little place just to come every now and again um, do some vlogs from uh, take a, a bit of a break away from the syndicate as well um, I'll just turn the camera in again so you can have a look at the lake so yeah it's about 12 acres and it's about 250 fish in here I think you've got two parts of the lake you've got this the main body of the lake here which is uh, obviously the largest part of the lake and then uh, if you go just up a gap through there uh, you've got another little little pool up there which is actually joined to this and um, it just goes through a little bit of a gap and that's about half an acre up there um, and that's actually where I fancied going to be honest on this session but because the lake's so badly flooded there's only about four swims on here at the moment that are actually fishable so I've had to slot in where I can but yeah I've uh, basically one of the car park swims which isn't too bad to be honest because I've got my car right, right behind me um, so I ain't got to lug my gear too far I'm not really a one for fishing car park swims to be honest but I haven't really had any choice on this session so but yeah it's nice having the car there I can keep all my camera gear and everything in there out of the way and nice and dry and safe when I'm not using it so yeah nothing more exciting than fishing a new lake really having the challenge and uh, working out a new water using the watercraft skills that I've learned over the years I haven't been on my syndicate for a few years I I feel that like I know the place quite well. Kind of like takes away the challenge, really. Once you work out a lake, you seem to slip into a routine of fishing the same swims all the while because you know you're caught from them before, you know the same spots that you're fishing. And uh, yeah, you just tend to kick back a little bit and uh, you don't really try, to be honest. Also, I've had, uh, the, I've had my target fish out there as well, so... Uh, it's nice to have a new place to come have a new, a new target fish this place has got about 250 fish in it i think i think there's about 430s in here there's uh, some backup high 20s as well and quite a few 20s it's also bream and roach in here as well and uh, a few tench i actually had a tench as well uh, but i didn't want to bring that up for the camera also moving on to a new water can help you refresh your, your skills as well you know, you, you tend to try a little bit harder. And it's also nice just to have a, just a change of scenery, really, and meet new people, to be honest. I met a few people on there already, the, the, the bailiff and the fishery manager, they're all top guys, so yeah. I'm really looking forward to spending some time on here. There is actually a, a closed season on here. Um, it closes for the main fishing season, the closed season for the fishing season. Uh, 16th of March till the 16th of July uh, to give the place a bit of a rest so yeah that'll give it a bit of a break but um, I'm looking back forward to getting back here in the summer because uh, basically the place is just full of lily, bed, lily bed beds um, all, all in the middle uh, all around the margins uh, and there's some really nice margins to fish in here as well and uh, yeah it's about average five foot deep over so that's not a particularly deep lake um, last few lakes that I've been fishing have been quite deep so uh, it's going to be nice to have a bit of a change a bit difficult to feel a drop but um, yeah be good in the summer I mean that fish I had a little while ago that common it just come straight to the surface and that was it so uh, yeah that's a good thing so uh, like I said earlier I'm, what I'm going to do on this session is I'm just going to uh, talk about how I approach a new water just go through a few of the things that I do um, to help me out and uh, make the session a bit easier um, but what I'm going to do first, I think I'm going to have myself some breakfast and uh, then I'll get back to you in a bit.
just had my breakfast, just finished my breakfast. I was in about to sit and talk to you about um, how I approach a new water. And the right hand rob's ripped off. And in there, I think I've got something quite special. I think it's one of the big ones. Seen. Nice big mirror. It's a good 20, good upper 20. And that was taken. Just focus that in again. Just off that tree over there. To the right. So yeah, bonus. Second fish of the session, second fish of the morning. I couldn't have asked for anything better. So yeah, let's get it out and have a look at it. <sighs> well, fish number two. This is a big mirror, this one. Taking off the right hand rod up against the margin. Just on the, uh, on the multi-rig again. With a uh, orange scent from heaven pop up this time. Yeah. Nice fat mirror. Set in the net for a couple of minutes, so might be a bit lively. Oh, what a session! Oh. Don't mind it yet, but let's just have a look at it first. Lovely. It's got a leech on his tail. Lovely fish. Like I said, taking on a uh, orange scent from heaven pop up. Just a single cast over to the margin. Just finished eating my breakfast and it ripped round. So look at the other side. Oh. Scar on it. Yeah, a couple of leeches on his tail. Let's get them off. It's going to be a good upper 20. Yeah. Well, looks like all my homework's paid off. My rigs are working, the boat's working. Oh. Long might continue. Let's get it wide. Twenty seven and a half. Do you want to just see on a look at this? Yeah. Twenty seven and a half. Big. 
candy. Well, can't moan at that. Got the leeches off it. Right, let's get it back. Well, what a result. Nice 27 pound eight mirror, um, taken from a margin spot just to my right hand side. And like I told you before, on the multi rig with a orange sent from heaven pop up. So yeah, that was a bonus. Um, the wind's actually changed this afternoon and it started trickling into that bank. So I thought what I'd do is uh, just flick a single over there and see what happened. Um, I just flicked it over there, had my breakfast. Uh, I was then moving my brawly over and back a little bit because I'd actually put it on a slope. I got here late last night and it was dark, so I set up set up in a bit of a hurry. And uh, so yeah, I've just moved my brawly back a little bit out of the mud and uh, put my ground sheet down as well because uh, a bit of condensation in the in the brawly last night. So I put my ground sheet down. So yeah, as a bonus. So um, like I said earlier, what I'm going to do in this vlog, I'm just going to tell you how I approach a new water. Um, hopefully you'll be able to use it in your fishing if you're going on to a new water or if you're just fishing the water that you've been fishing normally um, might just give you a bit of an insight on how I do things and perhaps you can put it into your fishing and uh, it might change things a little bit so uh first thing I do basically um, because this is a, a club water or a syndicate water um, and it's quite close to home basically what I do is I try to visit before I actually come fishing um, I was lucky enough to come down the other week and Rob the fishery manager took me round and uh, we were walking around for a good couple of hours and he was just showing me some of the snaggy areas and uh, giving me a, a good insight into the lake telling me the depths in certain places where the silt, silt channels are and where the lily pads, lily pads are going to be coming up and uh, yeah basically told me about some of the fish was, was in here and showed me some pictures and some fish so yeah that was invaluable information and uh, I actually bought my marker rod with me as well. So when Rob went, I actually got my marker rod out and uh, just had a walk around and started flicking it around in certain places, just to try to get a feel of the bottom composition and what have you. Um, now I knew when I, when I got here on this session or when I was gonna get here on this session that this bank was gonna be the only bank that I was gonna be able to fish because everywhere is still quite badly flooded. Um, so I did concentrate down on this end and uh, yeah, I found a couple of spots uh, the, the spot I had that mirror off uh, a little while ago was actually one of the spots that I'd found on that, that far margin and the, the common that I had this morning was actually another spot that I'd found the other day um, out in, in the middle of the lake so uh, yeah that was, uh, that was a good thing to do uh, what I did then is um, basically marked them down on a map that I've got and uh, when I got here last night because it was dark uh, basically I knew exactly where the spots were, I knew exactly how far they were, so basically all I did was just clip my rods up and put them out. So uh, yeah, that's my first tip for you. Just become familiar with the lake and uh, just come, just go and, go and visit it when you're not going to be fishing and have a good look round. So another thing I do is uh, basically I get a map of the lake. Um, you can either get this off Google Maps or I'm lucky enough to get a map off um, Rob the fishery manager sent me one um, It's actually on the, the the website and on the Facebook group as well that you can get on so uh, yeah He's actually sent me a map Here it is So basically what I've done When I before I printed it off I've put a compass on there uh, So I know Where the wind direction is going to be on on certain areas of the lake um, so you can pre-plan this. I've also made some notes as well. Um, so basically I've made some notes of the snaggy areas and I've also made some notes of the spots that I'd found and I've written the how many wraps they are uh, from the swim that I'm going to be fishing. So uh, also if you've got a compass on there you can work out where the sun's going to be on certain times of the day. So as we all know, the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. So I know in the afternoon, the sun's gonna be on this bank here. And in the morning, the sun's gonna be shining in this corner here. 
So obviously that's where the fish are going to be, where the warmest water is going to be. So in the mornings, the fish are more likely to be around this corner. And in the afternoons, the fish are more likely to be up on this bank. It's not a given, but um, I found in the, in the past that's, that's, that's a good way to go. If you can see where the sun's shining on, especially if there's a reed bed sitting there. Um, the sun basically hits the reed bed and then it reflects back into the water and warms the water up a little, a little bit more. So uh, what I'll then do is I'll go home and uh, what I'll do with this, I'll just update this on the computer. And um, then what I'll do is I'll print it off with the updates that I've put on there. So next time I haven't got all scribbles all over it, I'll actually do it nice and neatly. And then the next time I come, I can just put more on there and then I can go back and print that off as well. Uh, and then just build up a nice nice map of the lake. And uh, yeah, you've also always got something there that you can look at and you can take notes from. So my next tip for approaching a new water, uh, when you're having a look round, always take your polarized sunglasses with you. Um, these are my ones, these are the Fortis ones. They come in a really nice hard case, so uh, they don't get scratched and they're nicely protected. And these ones are actually the wraps. Um, the reason I've got the wraps is because I wear normal glasses and basically can't see nothing without my glasses on. But these fit nicely right over my glasses, like so. Um, so obviously I've still got my glasses on so I can see, but these are covering, covering the whole, whole, whole lot of the area around my glasses. So uh, yeah, these, these are pretty good, these ones. I know I look like the guy out of Peters and Lee. Um, if you're old enough to know who Peters and Lee are, you'll know what I mean. Um, but yeah, these are pretty good. They've even got the little bits on the side here. Um, they let a little bit of the light through as well, but they're still polarised. Um, yeah, you need your, your polarised glasses really. So if you're looking around the snaggy areas, um, basically you need to be able to see under the water, um, especially if you're checking out how bad the snags are, if you're going to be fishing to them from an opposite bank. Um, the fishery management here is pretty good to be honest. I mean, I've had a look round and most of the trees have been cut off just above the water line. So if you do get a fish and it goes into the snags, you're less likely to lose it or it gets tethered. Um, these are also good as well for looking out into open water um, because as you know, polarized glasses, they take the, take the, the glare off the water. Um, and I know you're not actually going to be seeing into the water, but just taking that little bit of glare off the water helps you see, uh, see, see more fish out there if there's any fish showing. Um, whereas if you've got a bit of glare on the water, you're more than likely squinting your eyes. So uh, yeah, Polaroid sunglasses are a must. So another thing I'll do um, when I'm walking around the lake prior to my first session is I'll stop and talk to any anglers that are fishing. Um, it's always good to introduce yourself and uh, get to know the people that you're going to be fishing with or fishing near to when you're on the, your syndicate or your club water. Um, you never know, they might give you a bit of information about the lake and tell you a few spots or a few areas where the fish like to hold up. Um, some people are a bit secret squirrel on syndicates, they don't like to give any information away, they like to keep it to themselves, but as you know, if you've watched my vlogs, I give all my information away. I'm always saying what bait I'm using, what rigs I'm using, um, how many wraps I'm fishing to a certain spot where I've been having fish from. So yeah, I don't really mind giving out information to other people. Um, but yeah, that's one thing I always do. It's when I'm walking around, just introduce yourself to people, have a chat with the other anglers. You never know, you might learn something. So the final thing I do when I'm preparing myself for my first session is uh, social media. Uh, most uh, club waters or syndicate waters have got Facebook groups or Instagram pages. Um, so they're always good to go on. Um, introduce yourself to the members and uh, be a bit active in a few posts and get to know people. Uh, you never know, you might find out a bit, of a bit of information about the areas that are fishing well at the time and what have you. Um, it's also good to look on the photo sections as well, seeing people's trophy shots. Um, you'll see the sort of stamp of fish that are actually in the lake and uh, you might be able to get yourself a target fish as well if you see a nice fish that you want to go for. Uh, it's always good to have a target fish. It's also good as well to look on the photographs and you'll see the, the swims that people have been catching from and the areas that people are catching them from. Um, I'm not saying become a peg pirate and just jump in people's swims because that's where they're catching from but uh, any information is invaluable when you're approaching a new water. So uh, yeah, that's the final thing I usually do when uh, before the first session or when I'm on my session is uh, just have a look through the Facebook pages and the Instagram pages and uh, yeah you never know what you might find.
Well, just had another tench, so uh, I thought it'd be a good opportunity just to bring the rods in and uh, check the rigs and refresh the hook baits. Um, rig I'm using on this session is just pretty standard, basically what I've been using in most of my vlogs. Um, about a half meter of lead free leader. This is the deception angling stuff, um, really strong. Uh, it's, like I said, it's lead free, but it's really supple, but it's still quite heavy. Um, I don't know if it's got tungsten in it or what have you. Um, just a little no trace bead on there on a little rubber stop. Uh, heli safe on there with a three ounce lead and basically the multi rig. Um, if you've been watching my vlogs again, you'll know this is the rig I've been using all this year. Uh, had nearly all, well, I've had all my fish on this rig. So, uh, white sent from heaven pop up on this one uh, with AAA Fox pop up weight. Uh, just a rubber sleeve, just to use a little bit of a kicker. So, yeah, these are the rigs I've been using. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get these uh, back on again, get the rods wrapped up again and get them back out before it gets dark, so uh, I'll get back to you in a bit. So that's all three rods back out on the money now. Yeah, they all went out first time, so I'm pretty pleased with that. Just turn the camera around. So yeah, basically, I've got two rods towards the point over there. Got 13 wraps out, and they landed about three foot apart, so uh, they're pretty spot on there. I'm not gonna put any more bait out, because the coots have been hanging around there, so uh, yeah, I'm not gonna put any more bait out. That's the spot I had the common off this morning. And I've got the other one about six foot off that tree. Um, couldn't really get it any closer because there's overhanging branches and what have you. But I did get a nice drop there, so and that's the spot I had that fish from earlier in the mirror. So um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. So yeah, it's gone flat calm now, and it's pretty warm to be honest. I say not warm, but it's mild. It's not cold at all. So uh, hopefully the fish will start moving about, and we'll have another one before we go. And um, we're going to go about lunchtime tomorrow. I'm on nights tomorrow night, so. Um, I want to get home, get ready for work. But yeah, I've really enjoyed this session, the first session on this uh, new water. I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, have myself some tea. Because I'm pretty hungry. Uh, tidying my brolly up because I've got camera gear everywhere and I've got tackle box everywhere and just stuff everywhere. So well, yeah, I'm going to have a bit of a tidy up, cook myself some tea, and then uh, I'm going to kick back for the evening and just sit and watch the water and hopefully have another fish. So if you don't hear from me again, I'll see you in the morning. And basically what I'll do is I'll just go through uh, some of the other things that I've done to approach this session. And uh, yeah, so I'll see you in the morning.
Well, good morning. Yeah, nothing to report throughout the night. It was quite quiet last night, to be honest. And uh, really heavy frost, I think. It got down to about minus two last night. So yeah, all the mud and the water in front of the swim is all frozen. But the sun's come up now and it's really warm beating into the bank. So yeah, it's quite nice sitting here. I'm hoping, with the sun getting in that corner now, I might hopefully have another fish off that margin where I had that nice mirror from yesterday afternoon. So uh, I'm going to sit out for another couple of hours. That's about eight o'clock now. And then uh, I'm going to start packing my gear away, get the gear in the car and uh, head home. I'm on nights tonight, so uh, I've got work. But yeah, I haven't really seen anything, to be honest, out, out in front anyway. Um, I sat up quite late last night watching the water and then uh, I got up about four o'clock this morning. But yeah, I haven't really seen anything, to be honest. So, what have I done tactically on this first session on the new lake that I usually do? Well, nothing really. Um, my advice would be, on your first session, to just come prepared. Do your homework, like I said earlier. Um, basically because I came down for that day and I brought my marker rod down, I found the two spots. Uh, those were the two spots that I had the fish off, so I was able to get here that, that night and um, after work when I got here and that was dark, I basically clipped the rods up and put them out on them two spots. And uh, yeah, they've produced fish for me, so um, that paid off for me. Um, Rig-wise, well, I haven't really changed the rigs either. Um, <clears throat> not any different from what I use on my syndicate. Uh, I'm sticking with the helicopter setup with the multi-rig on, because it works for me. Uh, the helicopter rig and the helicopter setup and the multi rig, you can fish more or more or less anywhere. You can fish bottom baits, wafters, or pop ups on the multi rig. Um, the only situation you can't really use a multi rig in is on uh, very thick weed. So, uh, but there's no thick weed in here at the moment, so that's that's pretty good. And the, the bottom composition here as well is basically no different than my syndicate. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to be sticking with that rig because it's working for me. Um, I also keep an eye on the weather and the air pressure as well. I use uh, an app, the Met Office app. I think that's probably the best one you can use. If the Met Office don't know, then uh, I don't know who does. Uh, and I also use um, a, a pressure app, uh, one called the Pressure Tracker, which you can get on uh, Android Marketplace or whatever it is. Um, and you basically just press the button and it, it, it tells you what the air pressure is at that time. Um, so yeah, just go prepared for the session, really. Um, I tied plenty of rigs up. I made sure that my rods were already set up, the leaders already on the rods, so all I had to do was get here, um, wrap them up, clip the rigs on, put a lead on, and then just put them out to the two spots that I'd found. And that's worked for me. Oh, there, there was no lead and about when I got here, so I wasn't disturbing the water. Just put the rigs on, one cast, and they're straight on the spot fishing. So uh, also, bait-wise, just stick with the same bait that you, you're using and what you're confident in. Um, I've been on the bait works now for about four or five months using the Atlantic Heat and the Monster Red. I've had really good results on them. Uh, Pop-up wise, I've been using the Scent from Hell um, on this session anyway. And I've been using also the Scent from Heavens as well, which I've had uh, both my fish on. So yeah, just stick with the bait you're confident in. Um, just because you're fishing a new water, there's no point in changing your bait. Because uh, if you change your bait and you stop catching, then that's going to throw up doubt straight away. So uh, just stick with the same bait and uh, keep watching the water. I got up really early this morning, I got up really early yesterday morning, got up about four o'clock before, before the sunrise, and just, just kept watching the water, looking for signs of fish. And if you do happen to see a fish on the other side of the lake or wherever, then, then you can move on to them. So. so yeah, what a success this session's been. I'm really happy with what's happened so far. So um, like I said, I'm gonna give it another couple of hours, have a slow pack down, uh, and then I'm gonna head home. So. Um, I'll get back to you in a bit. So that's it, we've come to the end of the session now. And what a session it turned out to be. Nice 22 and a half pound common and a nice 27, uh, 27 and a half pound mirror. Um, I really couldn't have asked for any more for the first session on this new lake. So uh, looks like all my homework and preparation paid off. Um, stuck with the same bait, stuck with the same rigs. And uh, the, the bait and the rigs that I'm 100% confident in that I've been using all season and I've had a few fish on already this year, so uh, yeah, why change it if it works for you? So I'll just turn the camera around so you can have a look at the lake quickly. And that's looking beautiful out there this morning. Flat calm, sun's really high in the sky. Not really carpy weather to be honest, but um, could be a day for zigs. But unfortunately I've got to go, so uh, 
but the lake is still still quite flooded but I'm hoping by the time I get here next time that'll all be down so uh, really looking forward to my next session to be honest probably come down again next week or week after and uh, put another vlog out in about another month's time so just like to thank everybody for subscribing to my channel uh, and leaving all the wonderful comments you keep leaving I really appreciate that your support uh, and also if you're new to the channel don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon and you'll be notified of any future videos that I upload and also don't forget to check out our Facebook group as well which is A Carpy Connection uh, we've also got an Instagram page as well which is at A Carpy Connection and if you upload any Carpy photographs to Instagram just uh, tag us in them and uh, we'll stick them on our feed I'll also be announcing the winner of the t-shirt giveaway that I, uh, I did on my last video uh, I'll be doing that at the end of this, this vlog so uh, hang around for that that'll be coming up next so yeah, just need to get home now and uh, that'll be me done. So uh, hope you enjoyed this vlog. Hope you get something out of it. And uh, until next time, be lucky. So as I mentioned at the end of the vlog, um, I'm now going to announce the winner of the uh, t-shirt for the um, competition that I did on my last video. Um, I asked a question, who was the famous carp angler? in the intro to my last video and uh, the answer was Tom Maker um, I actually had the pleasure of filming him at Linear Fisheries last year um, some people said Tom Dove some people said Simon Scott and Mark Bryant but the uh, the answer was actually Tom Maker so uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm now going to pick a winner from the comments um, so the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to use the random comment picker and what I'll do is I'll go onto the URL for the video so this was the video I'll just have to stop that that so these are all the people that answered and commented and had uh, the name in their answer so what I'll do is I'll just copy the, the URL from that I'll go onto the random comment picker paste the URL into there filter comments on specific text and what I'll put on here I'll just put Maker because some people didn't actually put Tom Maker, they just put Mr. Maker or Maker or Tom Maker. So what I'll do now is I'll get the comments. So 13 people actually got it right. So what I'll do now is I'll just press the button and uh, we'll pick a winner. So good luck everyone. And the winner is Ashley Poxton. Well done mate, uh, you win a t-shirt. So what I'll do is I'll, in the description for this vlog, um, I'll leave my email address and I'll leave the t-shirt colours and sizes that I've got. Um, if you could just email me what t-shirt size and colour you want and also put your address in the email as well uh, and I'll get one sent out to you straight away. So uh, thanks everybody for uh, commenting and uh, entering the competition. Uh, don't worry, I'll be doing a few more competitions throughout the year and giveaway. Uh, and also uh, there'll be plenty more vlogs coming as well so uh, I hope you enjoyed this vlog if you're new to the channel don't forget to subscribe and uh, I'll see you again soon so until then be lucky